Hey guys, Snoop Blacks here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own Super Smash Bros. stages. Before I start this tutorial, I just want to say a couple things. For this tutorial, you should have some basic knowledge of a 3D modeling software. I'm using Blender in this tutorial, but any sort of software will work. And the second thing I want to go over is that anytime during this tutorial, if you're stuck or don't understand something, Feel free to just post a comment, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. But yeah, let's just jump right into this. The first thing you want to do is go to n64vault.com. It'll take you to this website right here. And you're going to want to go down and click on Carnivorous Fork of Subdrake's GoldenEye Setup Editor. This is what you'll be using to like edit your level and put it in the game. So you're going to want to go and install beta 4.0 zip. Obviously, like if you watch this six months from now or a year from now, there's going to be a later version. So just download the later version. The next thing you want to download is the Super Smash Bros. Level Editing Guide. Download that too. You don't really need this, but I highly recommend getting it. Because if you don't understand something that I'm saying, you can look at this. Plus it has some lines of code you can use. Alright, so once you have your GoldenEye setup editor installed, I guess I'll just cancel these, I already have that. You're going to want to go to your computer. Mine's under my C drive, yours might be different, but go into your GoldenEye edit. Folder. You're going to want to make a folder yourself. And you're going to name this folder, name it pretty much anything you want. I'm going to name mine Hyrule because you're going to put a bunch of stuff from Hyrule the level into that folder. And the reason that you're doing this is kind of just to understand how things work. So what you're going to want to do is you want to put just a Super Smash Brothers ROM into the Hyrule folder. So once the setup editor is done, you're going to want to launch it. The way I do it is just go to Windows, Beta, Beta Editor. As you can see, it shows that the editor is out of date, so you should always update the editor. The most recent version you have is obviously going to be the best version and it might have more features or might fix bugs so always make sure to update the beta editor. Alright once the editor is done you just got to click copy beta to stable release and now when you launch it that shouldn't pop up the next time. Beta editor. <coughs> so the first time you launch it up it probably won't say Super Smash Bros. So what you do just go to switch editor game just click on Super Smash Bros just to change it to that now there's lots of tools that you can use on this but for now we'll only be using the visual editor and the image tools so what you're going to want to do is click file open setup uncompressed and I'll just go and open that ROM that you're using it'll be under the Hyrule folder Make sure Hyrule Castle is selected. You're going to see a blank wall. So what you're going to want to do is go to Tools, Preferences. Obviously you don't have to use the exact same preferences that I have, but I'd recommend to do so. Mouse move sensitivity, this is very important that it's like up all the way. Just makes it a lot easier to move around objects. Um, so all this stuff. Let's try to copy my settings I'd say. Don't invert up and down, that's really important. So the way I like moving around in the editor, there are many ways. But I like pressing tab. And you see how it says fly mode on. So then you can just use your cursor and fly. And you use like WASD to move, kind of like in a first person shooter or, or a computer game. Alright, now let's just take a good look at the level. As you can see, there's some stuff missing on it. That's just because of this display rooms things down here. So if you click on that, display full level, display one room, display rooms, you're going to want to have display full level. Um, another thing, you should just turn on the clippings. Just take a look and see how this game handles clippings. So here's the clippings. I'll turn off the levels so you can just see just what the clippings look like. So. All 
Right, so what you're going to want to do is when you're in edit object mode, you want to right click and go export preset to OBJ. And then in your Hyrule folder, just type in objects. And then the next thing you want to do is clipping. Right click, export clippings to OBJ. And then just go clippings. When you do this, change it to FBX to OBJ. Right, and save your clippings. And then next thing you want to go yeah, right click on edit room positions and then you're going to want to go export full level to OBJ. And then we'll just name this high roll level. So the reason why you're doing all this is so you have something to compare to when you're making your level. So when you're making your level you can get it to the correct scale and the correct positioning by comparing it to Hyrule and so you can get your clippings right by using Hyrule's clippings and edit it and get the objects right too. It just makes the process a lot easier. So the next thing you gotta do is make your model. In my opinion there's three main ways to do this. One, if you're really good at modeling you can make your own model from scratch. A couple of things you really have to remember you have to have a really low polygon count. Two, is your texture size should be max 64 by 64 all in intervals of 32 so for instance 32 by 32 is fine 32 by 64 is fine 64 by 64 if there's too many it might not load I'm not exactly sure how the game handles 64 by 64 textures so BMP files so a really good way to do this is going through the models resources the model I'm gonna make for this tutorial is this Majora's Mask If you look at the model, like look at the files, I guess. It's pretty good. The bad thing is it's a PNG, so I'm going to have to convert all these files to BMPs, but it's not too much work to do. And I think it should be a low enough poly count for it to work the first time. If you have a model with really high poly count, Blender has this really good tool called Decimate, and what it does is let's say a thing has a thousand polygons can have like a 0.5 multiplier make it only have 500 polygons and just reduces the polygon count. Obviously when you reduce the polygon count you're going to lose a lot of quality. For instance that's why I made Temple. I just really reduced it in the decimate feature and got rid of a lot of the polygons in the first place. So if you want to make a level, Nintendo 64 is probably the best category to go to because they have lower poly models. A good place to start is uh, Super Mario 64 has a lot of good models that you could use. And if you're looking for a more advanced level, the Super Smash Brothers Brawl levels are a great way to start. Because that's how I made my temple level. Yeah, any of these levels you could make using this editor, just decimating them and reducing the pixels. So every single texture, if it let's say they're all 128 by 128, you're gonna have to go to every single texture, reduce it to like a 64 by 32, and change it to a BMP. On it would be a really cool level to do if you're looking for inspiration. And the third method is to go into an emulator and you can actually export the entire thing that the emulator is showing onto an OBJ file. I'll leave a link to how to do that in the description. So either make your own level, use this website here, or use a VRML plugin I'll leave in the description. So you could use any sort of level from a 64 game. So I like using Blender, so that's what I'm going to use for this tutorial, but any sort of modeling program would work if you prefer using that. Once you've made a stage that you like, or you found a stage that you like, Make a new folder in the GoldenEye Setup Editor with the name of the stage that you're going to make. And that's what you're going to load into Blender. I'm going to go File, Import, Wayfond OVJ. And I'm going to go to Majora's Mask. I tried doing a different Majora's Mask level, that's why I called it 2. And yeah, it looks pretty good. 
very low polygon count so I feel like this is going to work really well. There isn't really too much I got to do for this but the one thing I am going to do is just change the PNGs to VMPs which is kind of a pain to do but there's only eight textures so it shouldn't take too long. So I'm going to create a shortcut to Majora 2. Um, okay, there it is. I'm just going to move this shortcut and put it on my desktop. Just so it's really easy just to go straight there. Okay, so now that that's there, I'm going to go Majora 2. Um, I like using Pixel Former to make really quick edits. If I do something more advanced, I'll use GIMP, but Pixel Former is a really good place to edit bitmap files. I'm just going to open. That's already good how it is. Export. And then I'll just go Desktop, Majora Shortcut, Save. And it should be good. Yeah, now I have that. Alright, so that all looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to want to do is just change these textures to the BMP equivalents here. So to do that, I'm just going to go to the, get okay, this right here. Source 878E. Right, the next thing you want to do is go into your folder and make a new folder in it. Let's just call this, I don't know, call this whatever you want. I'm going to call mine Majora BMP. Okay. So you're going to go into Blender, go File, Export, Wave on OBJ, and you're going to want to put it right in that folder. One thing that you have to do is go down and you see how it says path mode auto, change that to copy and then go export OBJ. If you did it right, this should have all your BMP files in there linked up to that OBJ, which is perfect. This is actually going really smooth. The last time I tried to make a tutorial, I did a like an actual level from in Majora's Mask and it took me probably eight hours to do the tutorial and it just wouldn't load in the game and I was just kind of screwed and it was just very frustrating so I'm really glad this time around it's going really smooth and I've had no problems yet so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select all these groups here Oops. I just hit control J I'm just grouping all these here into one and I'm gonna name this room one if you have big models, you can separate them into multiple rooms. The reasons why you'd want to separate them into multiple rooms is just kind of when you do the lighting at the end, if you want to light some things and not others. But really, just doing one room is usually fine. But when you do rooms, you got to go room 1, room 0, 2, room 0, 3. And it uses hexadecimal. So once you get to 9, it go 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, 10. So... It'd be like room 0A. 
room 0b. If you have that many rooms, just check the tutorial. I doubt you'll have over 10 rooms, but that's what you do if you do. Alright, so now this is looking really good. And we haven't really done much to have only changed the textures, but you're going to want to import your Hyrule. Right here, Hyrule level. The thing about Hyrule is that it's so much bigger than everything else. So what you're going to want to do is press N and it, uh, you're going to want to just add a couple zeros to this and it makes your clip different so you can see farther. And if you zoom out, as you can see, this model is really small compared to Hyrule, so we have to really make it a lot bigger. So I'm just going to go this, scale. I usually scale it by a factor of about 2,000. Okay, now let's see how that looks. Ah. Uh -huh. It's not bad. The way it is now, I feel like it'd be a little bit too short for a level. So I'm just gonna, oh, I'll probably scale it up to, I think 2,500 is probably the sweet spot that I'm looking for. Let's go 2,500. 2500 2500 okay um yeah i think that's probably about the right scale that we're going to want so the two reasons why you get a high roll here is one just to get the right scale two to get the kind of right positioning so you can use the same objects i'm going to put it probably about right here and three you want it on the right axis what do you mean by axis is like, so the characters will be standing on the right spots. I think I kind of want them to be standing on the horns of the mask. So probably like this. Yeah, that should be good. So what I'm going to do now is delete Hyrule. pretty much good to put in the game now. So I'm going to put this in Majora 2, Majora BMP. I'm just going to say Majora Smash. Next thing we got to do is this is why it's really nice to have the tutorial. So we're going to open the tutorial and we're going to go to the part where it talks about textures because it gives you a really cool line of code you can use to speed up a process. So this line of code is what we need. Okay, you need to have a texture file that has all these BMPs written out. But an easy way to do that is using the command prompt with this line. So we're going to go CMD. Um, we're going to go cd dot dot. This removes one directory because we got to get to the C drive. cd dot dot. Okay. So now we're in the C drive, which is good. We're going to copy addresses text. And we're just going to go cd space this. And now we're in this directory. So now we'll just go copy, paste this right in. And... It sh that should have just made a text file in here. As you can see, you have textures. And if you click on this, all it is is it just lists this out like this. When you have this many textures, you can do this yourself. It's not too bad, but if you have, let's say, 30 or 40 textures, that process is a lot faster. All right, so now we're pretty much ready to do our level. Okay, convert model file to level and add textures 
And then I'm going to go to the Majora folder. Okay, so I picked the text file. Now change this OBJ and then click your file. And then it should load into the game pretty good, hopefully. So for the file name here, I just like throwing in just some random stuff so you don't ever click that again. I don't even I'm not really even sure why they even do that. So cool. Um, well that middle part is kind of a problem, obviously. Is this part right there, it just doesn't seem necessary, Those, uh, this layer here having the eye stick out. Especially if you can't get proper transparency. So I'm just going to go to edit mode. I'm just going to select those faces on the eye. Now if you look at that, okay, so delete that face. It looks the same. I think that that was really unnecessary to have that second one. It probably looked good in game to just have the eyes have more depth. But that should be good now. So I'm gonna export OBJ Smash Majora Smash 2. Right, that looks good. So, just so, I'm just gonna import clippings from the Hyrule one, because that's the one we kind of compared it to. And I'm gonna import the objects from there too. All right. So now I want to tr test out this level and just make sure it doesn't crash before I start doing other stuff. But it does look really good. So I'm just going to go File, Save, Setup, Uncompressed, and just name the ROM. I'm just going to say Majora Test, Majora Test September 12th. Okay. So now in our folder, you're going to have Wait, where did I save that into? Did I save that into Hyrule? Yeah. I test all my hacks on an EverDrive just to make sure it plays on actual console. So I got a pretty good setup where I have it connected to my TV and to a capture card. Well, that looks so cool. Oh, that is great. Now what we have to do is make the clippings for the level. And to do that, we're going to go into Blender. And we're going to go File, Import, OEFON OBJ, Clippings. So that's the way Hyrule normally looks, I guess. And I guess as we can line Majora up just a little bit better t to go with the clippings. Uh, no, it's really hard to tell, but. Okay, let's say, let's take this line just move it up take Majora
That should be about good. So I'm just gonna go select room one, go file, export, wayfound OBJ, selection only, and just go Majora Smash 3. This Majora is just a little bit more lined up. So I'm just gonna turn the clippings on. Just kind of see what we have to work with here. So there's two ways you can do clippings. You can do clippings in Blender by using these and moving them around. And then you go into the visual editor and you go right click and import the clippings in. But for this, I kind of like doing it in the editor myself. So I'm just going to delete these unnecessary clips. Okay, I'm going to turn this model on. One important thing, pressing Control H lets you move the clips around, which is very important. To move left and right, you just click and go left and right. To move up and down, you grab the up and down tool and do it that way. So I'm going to move these here. I'll have these going like this. And then we'll have a left wall, which will be this. Move this over. I guess if you select two things, the one you click on will snap to the other one. So if I go right click, snap points together. I can just drag this. It tends to crash a lot when you're saving or when you're doing clipping. So every once in a while I just like going save, set up uncompressed, and just uh, save it just so if it does crash you're not going to be screwed and you can just open your save. This. Never put two clippings together that are the same color. For instance, I should not go and put this green clipping in with another green clipping because what I should be doing is right clicking and go insert point. I'm not sure you can see but this green line is way too big and it causes players to go through it sometimes so I'm just gonna fix this level. So I'm gonna do is move this green line and instead of adding another green line and like snapping the points together that's bad. You should only snap points together when it's like a green going on to a yellow are two separate sort of wall types but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, go insert point and you see how this point comes okay well it came in the wrong direction so I'm gonna have to kind of edit that so this is all considered the same clip with three points and the reason why you want to do it this way is because let's say if this was a clip here and this was a clip here and we snapped them together, the geometry here would make people fall through. But if you have one clip with three or four points, it makes it a lot easier. Here, I'm just going to show you a quick example here. A stage like Rainbow Road that I just did. things on. As you can see this course is all just one clipping with multiple points. Because if I made every single one of these a different clip you'd be able to fall through the stage. So this is all one clip. So if I were to right click and convert all the two points it would just make one straight line. So I hope I explained that well. Change this to wireframe, it makes it a little bit easier to do the points. I'm going to take this, this, snap these points together. Yep, 
guess I better explain this really quick. As you can see, there's different types. There's left wall, right wall, ceiling, and floor. Ceiling still isn't really figured out yet, so you can't really do ceilings. But, uh, walls work as really good ceilings, though, so it works out okay. Alright, well that looks pretty good so far. I'm just going to do another save. I'm just going to go right click, import additional clippings. And then go to Hyrule once again. Just for simplicity here, I'm going to make this bottom version of the mask. Um, I'll show you what I mean. I'm being a little bit lazy here, but I just feel like no one's really going to get into the collision under the map that well. And as long as it works, it like kind of works. Alright, that looks pretty good for collision. I'm going to delete these extra points here. Another thing I forgot to do, which is pretty important, is with your clippings. Okay, if you right click on any clippings in edit clip mode, get this menu where you can change it to floor, ceiling, right or left. Another important one is grab or drop through. What grab means is that point's grabbable, so you can like ledge grab and get up. What drop through means is that if you press down, you'll drop through. This is usually good for like platforms. So I'm just going to change this point to a grab point. Does that even work? Okay, I can't move these clippings because I got to press Control H. I can move them. Okay, yeah, that is a grab point. I'm just going to make both these grabs because that should definitely make it work. Okay, this point here, flag is grab, move over, and as you can see grab points are pink, uh, drop through points are blue. So go to edit object mode, yeah, press U, take all these boxes and just move them up, just above the level. Okay, yeah, just like that. So I'm just going to click on individual boxes. This one says tornado spot. Probably a tornado like around here would be cool. Item spot. This is the one that spawns on the ground. So I'm just going to go put it here. These two I'm going to put over here. Alright, I think that should pretty much be good. I'm just going to go tools. Check level for errors, no errors found. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go test again on my console.
That looks so cool. Spawn points work good. Collision work is good. She looks up pretty good. The one thing you're going to want to do now is go to Edit Portals, click on this Edit Level Information. This is pretty much your camera and your death barriers. This fall whistle is when you go down to a certain uh, fall it'll make like a sound uh, music index that's the song we're using nine and it looks pretty good I think my barriers might be a little bit too big but for such a small course I think that's okay okay and now that your levels all done you have to do lighting the lighting in Majora's Mask is already pretty good so I'm not gonna add it I'm gonna show you how to do lighting on this stage right here so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to mode, switch mode to edit lighting sources. Okay, so that's just going to add light. So you're going to want to right click somewhere on your stage and then go insert light source, insert sun. Okay, so I have a sun in here now. I kind of like dragging the sun up a bit. You don't have to do this, but it just makes it more sunlight, it being in the air. So I'm just going to right click, um, edit light source properties. So first thing you're going to want to do is you can make it apply to only one of your rooms, but I like doing it to all your rooms. Obviously, if you want to make certain areas of your level bright, you could all make that the same room and you could utilize that feature a lot. But for me, for this level, I'm going to go um, I'll select all rooms. Okay. So for your rotation, you're going to want to go and go 45 degrees, enter, wait, shoot, no, so you'll edit, edit light source properties, you want to go 45 degrees and 210 degrees. You could screw with this a little bit, but that's just what works for me. So I'm going to apply changes. I'm going to go max light intensity to 5. There you go, that really changes it. Minimum light intensity to 5. So now that's looking a little bit better, but as you can see, those bars are all still black and they should all be different colors. So I'm just going to turn up the light a little bit more. So I'm going to go power 10, uh, max light intensity 10. So that should make it even more brighter. Okay, and the last thing is this will light up your level completely. You change all these to 1. 1. Okay, do you see how I finally got the bars to be white? That's because it's just really hard for light to hit that shape. And I'm not sure what exactly Avian Edition does, but it makes it so that works. Another cool thing is, let's say you want to make your stage like more red, for instance, you could just go only add the red light. Then bars look red. It actually kind of looks cool. I'm going to just see what it looks like at green. But pretty much this adds light to the things that aren't getting any light. Because some stages, no matter how much you add light, like things will still be black. And that, that's the way you do it. So I guess I'll, I'll keep them white. That's how they are in the real game. Right, so that's how you add light to a level. And as you can see, like this looks a lot better now. When you're done doing that, you want to right click. And you want to go bake BG file all rooms. Make sure you do that. Are you sure you want to bake lights? Yes. All right, and that's how you add lighting to your course. What you're going to want to do is once you have your ROM that you like, you're going to go to Image Tools.
in your folder that you're using for your level. So I want to do new folder texture. Choose the ROM with like your final level. So for me, September 125. Okay, so pretty much you could change any of these textures if you want, but we're only going to be changing the ones that have to do with the level. So we're going to go down and go through them all until we find the ones that we need. Okay, first texture is since mine is the Legend of Zelda theme, I'm going to leave it like this. If I were doing a level that didn't fit the Zelda theme, you'd export this texture and change it too. I mean, I guess I could export this to a Majora's Mask thing, but I think just the Triforce is good. Because obviously that just means it's a Zelda level. Okay, first thing right here is this one. So we're going to save the bitmap into your texture folder that you just made. So majority to texture save. Okay. And then you're going to want to save this bitmap to same folder. And then next is the background that it uses. Save bitmap. Okay, the reason why mine are all temple things is because I'm replacing temple. But for you, you're replacing Hyrule. So yours is going to be all the Hyrule things. So you'll either edit three or four things. First thing that you're going to want to edit is the text. So you're going to open with whatever you want to use. GIMP's probably the best, but pixel form will just be a little bit faster for me. So I'm just going to go duplicate this layer, take this layer, and just go delete. I'm just going to fill it in black. Kit text. I'm going to try to find some text that matches, matches what this looks like. Okay, I like that one. It might be, if anyone can find the exact font that Smash uses, if you could leave a link in the description, that'd be greatly appreciated. But for now, I'm just going to use this one because... So I'm going to go export, and then I'm going to export that in the same folder, and I'll just go... I'll just do it as Majora writing. Okay. And then the skybox. This skybox is huge. It's 300 by 263. So you can really uh, get creative with it. File. Open as layer. That's really nice. Um, which part do I want in there? I don't really want to downsize this. Having a link would be cool, but it's kind of a skybox, so I kind of think maybe match up with this corner. Let's not have link in there. This corner wouldn't be bad. Let's go bottom. I like that, yeah. I like that a lot. Okay, so file. I think that's going to look like a really cool background when I get this in. So I'm just going to go background. The hard one to do is the stage selection screen icon, purely just because it's so small. 
So for this, what my idea is, I'm gonna go zoom in on this, I'm gonna go file, open as layer, open this as a layer, even though it's gonna just be just huge compared to it, but whatever. We'll just downscale, wait. We'll just go and downscale this all the way down. A little bit bigger. No, that'll be good. And then I'm just gonna go file. I have a Majora's Mask icon on my uh, All right, so we'll export that as stage selection screen. All right. Another really important thing about this is GIMP is a great free program to use for editing images. That's what I use for my thumbnails. That's what I use for making custom textures. But the bad thing about GIMP is that it does not export BMPs properly for using a Nintendo 64 games. So I have another program called Pixel Former. So what I'll do is I'll edit the image in GIMP. Then once I'm done, open it in Pixel Former and just export it again and replace it. Just because that BMP's format actually works. If you try to upload an image that was exported with GIMP's BMP exporter, it will kind of destroy your ROM. And even if you go and upload an image over that, that ROM will permanently be bad. This one I made in Pixel Former, so this one's fine. But I'm going to go here open up and just export it and just replace the one I made in GIMP. And in Pixel Former, always pick the 32 BPP option. Sometimes you won't have that option, it'll be 24, but just pick the 24 then, like both of them work, 24 or 32. All right, so now that one's replaced. Now we'll replace this one. So now we're ready to put those images in the game. So we're in image editor, choose ROM, pick the ROM that you need. So we just need to replace three images, not four, since we already have the triangle. If anybody finds what exact font Smash uses, if you could put that as a comment in the description, I'll update my description with that. Because having a different font kind of looks funny. I know some people who are more nitpicky than me would really want to have the same font, so. Okay, so now. Oh, that font that I use doesn't look too bad. Okay, sometimes when you replace a texture, your other texture will go back to how it was. So I want to make sure that this stays this way. Okay, it looks like it's good. All right, now third is the background. Okay, there we go. This. Be this. And, yeah, that looks good. Just gonna make sure that the other two are changed. So right wrong with new changes. I'm gonna name this September 127. Just keep going up so I know which one's the recent. So my usual method, I kind of changed it up there just because I was trying to make it faster for you guys. So you change an image, right when you change it, right wrong with new changes change another image, write ROM with new changes. And just, every time you change an image, just keep writing new ROMs. So that way it saves it. And usually this level would be done. This would be all you have to do, but I want to do custom music. So, to do custom music, by default it's going to have the Hyrule theme, since you're on Hyrule level. So to change the music, what you do is you go to Edit Portals and Background, Edit. You have to right click on the model, you can't just right click anywhere. So Edit Level Information, and at the bottom it shows the music that plays. 
Um, there's a really good list on the cutting room floor, just this link up here, which shows you every single song. I'll try to either leave this list in the description or I'll link to this page. So right now I have it on Hyrule Castle, but you can import custom music into the game too, which is pretty cool. So what I usually recommend that if one of these songs fits your level, use one of these. Because making a custom level can be a really big pain, and they usually don't sound the greatest. So if any of these work with your level, try it. If you have a generic level, you could always do like the Metal Cavern, the Metal Mario stage music, or any of these. But another thing about doing custom music, you should change your song to song number 5. The reason you want to do this, if you're doing custom music, is because Congo Jungle is the largest file song in the game. What I mean by that is Congo Jungle is the biggest song for file size. So if you go to replace it, it gives you a little bit more room for longer songs or songs with more instruments. So since we're going to replace this song, I'm going to go here and change the music index to number 5. Alright, so now that I got the Congo Jungle theme and the grab points, I think this should be good. So I'm going to go File, Save, Setup, Uncompressed. Alright, now for the last step, getting custom music. So to get custom music into the game, what you got to do is you go into the Editor, Tools, and you're going to want to go Game Configuration. Alright, now open up the ROM that you're going to edit. For me, it'll be this one here. So what this has is a bunch of sounds. So we're editing song 5 because it's Congo Jungle. It's the biggest song. So we're going to use this replace mid with MIDI. So we're going to get a MIDI file of the Clock Town theme from Majora's Mask. So there's two ways to get MIDI's. One, if you just do a Google search, you can find a MIDI of most songs. Um, there's a couple good MIDI websites I'll link, but there's a program to export MIDI files directly from Nintendo 64 games, and if you're doing a Nintendo 64 game song, I recommend getting it that way. The reason why I say do it that way instead of getting a song online is the song online might not come directly from the ROM, so it might be a lot bigger, and other Nintendo 64 game MIDI's just go into it a lot better than a MIDI someone else made on the internet, or maybe the guy did rip it from the ROM, but he changed up the instruments or something, so going into the ROM game, the MIDI is the way to go, in my opinion, if you're doing other songs that were on the Nintendo 64. So to get a MIDI from another game, you gotta go to, to GoldenEye Vault, and you're gonna want the Nintendo 64 sound tool, version 1.4. The MIDI tool pretty much does exactly what this is right here, so you don't really need the MIDI tool, you just need the sound tool. So go ahead and download that. So yeah, so once you download it, you're going to want to just open this Nintendo 64 sound bank tool, and then you're going to want to get the ROM for the game you're going to rip. So I'm just going to pop up a Majora's Mask ROM here. Make a new music folder. Alright, let's put the ROM there. So you're going to go select the game that you have. For us, it's obviously going to be Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. This has pretty much every single Nintendo 64 game. It's missing a couple, but it's pretty much every one. You. Okay, load ROM. Alright. So when you press preview, it should play the song. Oh wow, this one actually has it all written out. Usually it's not. So we're going to want to do... Okay, that's sound bank 0. That's Ocarina of Sound. Sound bank 2. Sound Bank 3, okay, this is the one that should have Clock Town. Let's check it out. 
Probably day one is what you want. Or what I'm looking for. Okay, I'm gonna export the MIDI. Just put it right into the music. I'll just press stop. So bank 19, I'll have to remember that in case day one doesn't work out. Alright, so now I'm just gonna go replace mid with MIDI. And let's just see if it works. Sounds weird. That's because it's using different instruments. Kind of sounds cool, but... So that sounds cool, but... Uh, what I'm going to do is... There's a program called Anvil Studios. It's free. I'll put a link in the description, but... Download that program. And once you have it downloaded, just open up your MIDI with that program. Okay, so now what you want to do is look at the instrument list. Um, the instrument list is on this YouTube video. I'll put this in my description too, though, so you have it. So these are the instrument values. I'm just going to throw that in a notepad. So now let's check out which instruments it uses right now. And we'll change that to these. So, first instrument is the... Okay, so first instrument, let's just see how that sounds and what we would want that to sound like. So that's pretty much the percussion. So right now it's on 128, which isn't even a thing. So let's change it to... Still drums really good, so I'm going to change this to 33. 33. Yeah. Kick. Okay. So second one. Let's just see what it sounds like. Okay, piano or flute crashes it if you do one. The organ sounds really good. So the organ is... Two. Okay, so I'm going to change this to two. So now that that's done, just export your MIDI. Um, so we'll just go File, Export MIDI. I'm just going to name this as Majora Right. Alright, so when we import this, then we'll see what it sounds like with the Smash Bros. file instruments. Okay, it sounds decent. I'm nitpicking. I think I'm going to try changing instruments one more time. Okay, I like that. Okay. So, the one last thing you gotta do is you need to download one last program. We don't need to do this, but there's a thing called a looping point in the song. Do you see how this song has an intro? Like that part right there. You don't really want that part to play every time the song loops. You want it to play from that point. So you gotta find the loop point in the song. And to do that, you need to download a program called Synth Font. I'll leave a link in the description. So Majora 4, we're going to open with Synth Font. So, I honestly don't understand this program that well. You could probably change the instruments on here too, but I just like using um, uh, Anvil Studios because I've been using it for a while for MIDI's. So what you want to do is you want to go to this part here and okay, this is the intro, this is where the song starts at 3.1 as you can see. 
Okay, so 3.1 is our loop point. Yeah, right here. So you're going to want to go to MIDI events and Okay, right here. Bar 3 when 384. So when bar 3 hits it's 384. So as you see, it starts here at bar 3, go to MIDI events, bar 3 happens at 384. So I'm going to go here, type in 384 decimal, because that doesn't use hexadecimal, that uses decimal, so 384. Okay, loop. Place MIDI with MIDI, drawer 4, open. Alright, write ROM. And then I'm going to type... Do this one as Majora 5. Alright, and that's how you make your own level. I didn't think this video was going to be almost an hour long when I started it, but <laughs> it just ended up that way. Okay, and once your level is complete, I'd highly recommend that you submit your level into the N64 vault. To do that, you just have to go to the contact slash submit form file. You want to go and just add this email address to your email and send it in that way. A good format to send in your levels is you go to just download another smash level. So yeah, just download another smash stage level. Let's take this for example. You can kind of use that as a template. So even make a patch of your level. Um, to make a patch, just search it up online. They're really easy to make. Um, take a screenshot of your level so that they can post that up on the vault and you want to do a text document Honestly, I just take like a text document from someone else's just change the title date completed Just change it to what you like once you have all those three things in a folder You're just gonna want to go right click send to Send to compress zip folder And then yeah, then you'll have it in a zip folder then you can email the golden eye vault at this site right here and send it in and hopefully within a couple days your level will be featured on the site in their Super Smash Bros level list. So yeah that's how you submit your levels in. Alright guys thank you guys for watching really appreciate it. If you could leave a like and a subscribe that would be great. Alright have a good one.